Hello folks, Professor Fiori here, and it's time for another video lecture on active crossovers. So if you've seen the preceding videos, right, there's one on passive, there's the intro to uh, active crossovers, there's one on the uh, derived filter, kind of an interesting one. We're going to finish this up on uh, what's called a Linkwitz-Riley active crossover, Linkwitz-Riley filter very popular these days. It solves some problems for us. Now, the whole issue here is the recombination. Again, I'm going to stick with using a two-way system, but this is easily extended to a three- or four-way system. The idea is when you split the spectrum apart, right, you got one for a woofer and one for a tweeter, when you recombine them, how can you be sure that that recombined signal is nice and flat. In other words, that it has no amplitude variation. It's you know, zero dB, as we would say, unity amplitude. And there's nothing funky going on with the phase response. Right? Ideally, we would like zero phase response. And in the derived filter, that's what we got. Right? Everything added up really nice. The net filter uh, phase response was zero. Happy, happy, joy, joy, right? The problem with the derived filter is really on the, on the uh, low frequency end, is that although we could set up, let's say, a third order 18 dB per octave roll off for the tweeter, the woofer actually needed extended high frequency performance because the derived filter, the low pass filter, wound up only having about a 6 dB per octave slope, and it had about a 4 dB bump at the critical frequency. So, that's a little bit more demanding of the woofer than perhaps we would like, okay? But, you know, technically it does produce the exact combination, the recombination, I guess we should say, um, that we're looking for, all right? Now, a third order Butterworth is pretty nice. That will add up as well, as far as the amplitude is concerned. The phase is non-zero, right? So what we want to look at now is this Linkwitz Riley, which is gained a lot of popularity because it will produce the unity amplitude that we're looking for. However, the phase will not be zero. It's not a crazy phase shift, but it's non-zero. Another nice thing about the Linkwitz Riley is you can get a nice high roll-off rate. You can do a fourth order system, in other words, a 24 dB per octave roll-off, which is, you know, actually pretty nice as far as the woofer and the tweeter are concerned, right? They don't need extended high frequency and low frequency response for the two drivers. Um, another nice thing is they're relatively easy to design because they're based on Butterworth alignments. As a matter of fact, some people refer to them as double Butterworth or Butterworth squared, you know, something like that. Um, it's kind of an interesting uh, setup, actually, as you'll see, right? So first, let's start with second order Butterworth high pass, low pass filters. This is something we saw in an earlier video. And just to kind of refresh your brain here, if we just did the um, uh, basic plot, we came over here, we can see what's going on here, right, for our high and low frequency responses, right? So here's the high pass, which is the green, right? We can get this nice roll off here down at around 100 hertz. You can see where we're, where we're going here, you know, 40 something. Same thing for the, uh, for the uh, low pass, which is this maroon, right? You go up a decade, there you are. Things looking good, 40 dB. Check out the phase, though, and what we find is that at the critical frequency, plus 90, minus 90, these things are exactly out of phase. And if you just sum them, we have a real problem, okay? We have something that looks... Um, not so satisfying. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is just literally sum these signals. I'm just going to say, okay, let's take the low pass and we'll add that to the high pass. All right. And we'll see what we get. Uh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Let me move that out of the way. So that is our, this right here is the combination. So if you hadn't figured this out before, you know, you have two signals that are the same amplitude because that's what's going to happen at the critical frequency. They're both going to be 0.707, 
you know, or 70.7 percent of the nominal value. So they're the same amplitude, but they're 180 degrees out of phase, so they perfectly cancel. And what we get is this big notch right at one kilohertz. Right now, this is going to happen with a second order filter, right? All the even orders, this is essentially what's going to happen. Um, now, some people will say, well, why don't you just flip the phase, right? Why don't we, why don't we just flip the phase of the loudspeaker coming out of here, right? In other words, this goes through the power amplifier and then that drives the woofer. So why don't I just swap the two leads on the woofer and then they'll be in phase? Yeah, they will be, but now that they're in phase, you've got 0.707 plus 0.707, which is 1.414, meaning you'd now end up with a 3 dB bump. All right. So maybe that's better, right, than a big dip. But it's really not what you want, right? Let's just be honest with that. It's not what you want. So along come a couple of guys, Linkwitz and Riley, and they, they quite a few years back, did a little work in this area. And they said, you know, something interesting happens. Um, if I do a double of this, right, I take two Butterworth second order filters, high pass and low pass, and I, I just cascade them, okay, I end up with something interesting. Now, it's a very common question that I would get in lecture, which is, you know, if I want to make a fourth order filter, do I take, for example, a fourth order one kilohertz Butterworth alignment filter, do I take a second order one kilohertz Butterworth filter and feed that into a, another second order one kilohertz Butterworth filter. Is that what I get? And the answer is no, that is not what you get. You don't get a fourth order one kilohertz Butterworth filter. Each one of those things is three dB down at the critical frequency. So that means your net filter is actually six dB down at the critical frequency. That's three dB down somewhere else. So you have a fourth order filter, but it's not a Butterworth and it's not tuned to one kilohertz, okay? So what do you get? You know, people would ask me, well, what is it? I said, well, it's something else. Well, it turns out that something else is a linkwitz riley alignment. So take a look at this, right? I've got 15.9 uh, uh, nanofarads for these two caps, 7.07 .07 and 14.14K for the two resistors here, all right? And then essentially the same thing over here, but the components are flipped, okay? So here's the same thing, the 15.9 nanos, the 14.14, and the 7.07. .07. Here's the same exact circuit. So this is a second order by itself. This is a second order Butterworth alignment filter at one kilohertz. So is this. And down here, it's the uh, low pass version, all right? So at one kilohertz, I expect this thing to be 6 dB down, same over here, all right? So not a fourth order, not, not, not a fourth order one kilohertz Butterworth filter. It is, in fact, a Linkwitz Riley one kilohertz fourth order filter. So this thing is going to roll off at 24 dB per octave. That's pretty nice. That's a nice quick roll off. All right, let's verify that. All right, now oh, it doesn't maybe look too impressive right off the bat. Looks like some of the other curves that we've gotten. But I'm going to go back here to the critical frequency and notice we're looking at 6 dB over here. That's a little high. So, well, that's about as close as I'm going to get, right? 1.0023 kilohertz minus 6.0021 dB. So it's 6 dB down. Now you go down one decade to 100 hertz and look where you are, right? You're 80 dB down. Boy, that's nice. That's a that's really limiting the low frequencies going into that tweeter. And then of course, the same thing is gonna be true as far as the woofer is concerned. So that's really nice. You get a 24 dB um, uh, per octave slope, okay? Now, what about phase? Is it zero phase? Okay, so you know we look at this, this is the phase that we're getting. Um, hey, that looks kind of interesting. Let's split that, because I only see one curve, right? Well, there you go, zero to minus 400, zero to minus 400, it's the same curve. So the, the, the um, phase shift that you're getting between the two devices, between the two outputs, is net zero. That's important as far as the acoustic summation is concerned. In other words, the two signals themselves are in phase. What this is telling you is they're not in phase 
with the input signal, right? We're get, we are getting some time shift compared to what the input signal is, but at least we're not going to get the cancellations or the additions that we would get with other kinds of filters, right? So um, the phase response isn't perfect. It's not zero across the board, but at least it's net zero between the two, okay? So when we sum them up, things should sum up nicely. And that's essentially those two things. That's why Linkwitz Raleigh filters have become very popular. Right? Not saying it's the end all be all, but it's a nice solution to the problem. Right? You get a nice quick roll off. Uh, the summation ideally would be uh, even across the board, across frequency response for both amplitude and phase. Downside is, you know, that, like I said, the phase is not zero degrees relative to, or even constant, which would be nice, even constant compared to the input signal, All right? But that's a that's a, a minor thing compared to the overall picture, All right? And the design is relatively easy. You just make a second order uh, Butterworth filter, right? The most common filters out there, just double them up, make two of them for uh, the high pass, make two of them for the low pass, and there you go. And if you wanted to, you could go beyond this. You know, you could get a, like a, a sixth order filter or an eighth order filter, but the, the fourth order seems to be a really good sort of sweet spot in terms of the complexity of the circuit and what you're getting out of it, okay? All right, so now after this series of videos, you have a pretty good idea, hopefully, of the requirements for an active crossover network, different ways of doing it, what the pluses are, what the minuses are. And if you have any questions or comments, put them down in the comment area below the video, and we'll see you next time. Take care.